In the 1970s, a Herculean effort leads to the construction of a new railway in East Africa by China. It rolls across 320 bridges from the Tanzanian coast to Zambia in the continent's center. The Tazara, a feat of modern engineering in a wild and varied landscape. The Tazara connects the port of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania with Kapiri Mposhi and offers landlocked Zambia independence from other trade routes. In the 1970s, Dar es Salaam is Tanzania's economic and cultural centre and is emerging as a modern metropolis. The city overlooks the Indian Ocean and is not only home to millions, but is also East Africa's largest port. The city is buzzing with the spirit of entrepreneurs and traders with a constant need for mobility. Roads play a major part, but for those who want to access the villages further away from the big cities, trains are the preferred choice. Half a million passengers pass through Dar es Salaam's largest train station each year. Most travel third class. A ticket for the entire route costs the equivalent of 28 euros. First class in a sleeper costs 40, a hefty price close to the average local monthly salary. Security is tight. Every piece of luggage is checked and plastic bags are banned to protect the environment. Not everyone complies, despite the lingering threat of punishment. Like any train station in the 21st century, this one is also sometimes host to an impromptu fashion shoot. Let's go. The journey from Dar es Salaam to Kapiri Mposhi takes around 50 hours, or 42 if you take the express. The locomotive's two engineers are replaced eight times along the route for safety reasons. Engineer William Luyalu is well aware of the dangers on the job. It's a major profession, but uh, what should we do? should be extra, extra vigilant and careful, especially when carrying passengers. They are carrying human lives. To be very attentive when they are careful. For Aloysius, a Catholic priest, the train is still a symbol of Afro-Asian solidarity and he's happy to shed some light on the background of the Tazara's nickname, Uhuru. other countries in Africa that were not yet liberated from colonialism and uh, most of them were in the southern part of Tanzania like Rhodesia which is now Zimbabwe and the other one is South Africa. So who is the liberation? Much like the path to independence, the construction of the railroad was never straightforward. 100,000 Chinese and African workers used machetes over six years to clear the way for the tracks, and in the process sacrificed the ancient pastures of the Maasai people to make way for the Uhuru, bringing an end to the Maasai's relative seclusion. In the middle of the Kazinzumbi, one of the oldest forests in the world, tree after tree was felled to make way for the remote Mazenga railroad station. The Tazara was supposed to stop here several times a day, bringing hungry and possibly tired travellers, sometimes in need of a room for the night. But the dreams never materialised, and the track remains mostly desolate.
Necessity is the mother of invention, and the villagers have converted a trolley into a makeshift ambulance running along the tracks. The fastest way to get this sick woman to a doctor. The employees stay on out of their love for their Uhuru Railway. The loyal workers still make regular trips to inspect the tracks. Discarded wheel sets lie scattered alongside concrete ties at the edge, bleak reminders of the past. But when the Tazara does roll in, the station comes alive. The residents of the Kazumzumbi forest try to make the most of the short stop by finding customers among the travellers. Some offer homemade snacks such as roasted peanuts or fried dumplings and drinks, a welcome opportunity to make some extra cash. <laughs> Indeed, Africa's largest infrastructure project in the 1970s was designed to sate people's appetites and make them happy. Tanzania and Zambia are still among the poorest countries in the world, and the funds for safe and comfortable travel are not always available. Paul Mehachuba, a local English teacher, would prefer to take the more comfortable bus, but it's too expensive. Because the program is very poor, the program is bad for the train. Yeah, it's just because I didn't have enough money, because I, I am not alone. I, I am traveling to the funeral with my parents and my brothers, so I have to sponsor them. Yeah, that's why I'm using this thread. Despite its reputation for being slow, the Tazara can reach a respectable 110 kilometers per hour, faster than most buses. The third-class compartments are often overcrowded, and passengers must sometimes stand on the platforms between the cars. The unique view offers some consolation. Shortly after Mzenga, the Tazara reaches the Sulu Game Reserve. At 52,000 square metres, it's the largest game reserve in Africa and the second largest on Earth. But it's also the only reserve in Tanzania that allows commercial big game hunting. Only the no hunting areas in the north are open to safari tourists. I like taking this train because I can watch the animals. I like traveling by train. It reduces the stress in my head and I arrive home very relaxed. Finding the right path for the railroad tracks in the middle of the savannah was difficult. Encounters with wild animals are always risky, and going on safari aboard the Tazara remains a memorable adventure. When I'm operating the plane, actually, I have to see. I have to see at a certain distance to see that the line is clear. If I find that the animals crossing, I have to slow down to allow the animals to cross safely. And uh, if it happens that I meet them by accident, we've got also horns and we've got also some bells. Yeah, switch on the bells, ding, 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 ding. So we caution them. And some of the animals which are usually on the line, they are very much aware of the train. These monkeys are used to the line and waste no time getting out of the way. 
Some of the larger animals, like elephants, have derailed more than one train, and their presence means the engineers have to always remain vigilant. About 200 kilometers after Dar es Salaam, the train pulls into the Kazaki train station. It was a trading post as early as the beginning of the 19th century, attracting both caravans of Arab merchants and slave hunters. Socialism promised a great future for Kazaki with a planned economy. But little actually emerged. Passing trains are few and far between and their arrival times are unpredictable. Adapting to the constant uncertainty, provisional times are jotted down on a blackboard using chalk. Even though no one knows for certain if and when a train will arrive today, the employees dutifully open the packing and weighing station. Working here demands more than a healthy dose of patience. On some days, the announcement changes every hour. Today, the Tazara is already eight hours late. But that doesn't deter people from buying tickets. For anyone planning to leave Kazaki, there are few other alternatives. The families of the railroad workers are often traders and small farmers. Many bought land in the 1970s and hoped to make a good living from growing corn, potatoes or rice. The Tazara gave people hope. Hope for a regular income, for building a future for themselves and for their children. But the railroad company's closures and layoffs hit precisely these smaller stations the hardest. The much-anticipated economic boom along the railroad line never came, and the train has proven to be both expensive and unprofitable. The modern era has yet to arrive at these stations, and lack of money is to blame. This block system was supposed to keep the train traffic safe, but it's been out of order for a while. Signs, equipment and even cables. Anything of value might get stolen or dismantled. In Kazaki, station master Christopher Mpanda and his colleague Simon Mpungo are responsible for ensuring safe train operations. I have almost forgotten how this machine works. The Chinese brought it with them. We used to control train arrivals and departures. You press this button here. We referred to it as calling. The next station would then answer and tell you that in the next 24 hours, the first train should arrive at 8 o'clock. With that, we would set up for the next train to arrive at 8 o'clock. And we block the track for that train. Since the machine is broken, train dispatching now runs via cell phone over a spotty network. And for the most part, wild animals present a greater risk than train wrecks. I've only been here a month, and I'm not so used to the wild animals yet. Sometimes, when I go out and handle a train, I hear them very close by. It happens a lot, more than five times just this month. The loudest ones are the elephants and the hyenas. I try to make as much noise as I can to scare them away. But when I hear the trumpeting of an elephant, I hurry back to get my colleagues. It's less dangerous if we work in teams. Every train is dispatched manually. 
The Shoma, an auxiliary vehicle used for track inspections and employee transport, is no exception. There's no sign of the Tazara, so we're invited to take a ride. To the northwest of Kasaki, Mikumi National Park borders the Sulu Game Reserve. Together they form an ecosystem of almost 60,000 square kilometers. Unlike other Tanzanian national parks, Mikumi is still relatively unknown and can be discovered by tourists on their own. Although the African crocodile might appear peaceful, it's anything but harmless. It can grow up to six meters long and is skilled at hunting reptiles, fish, birds, and the occasional human. Mikumi National Park is surrounded by towering mountain tops and forested foothills. To the east, the Uluguru Mountains loom in the distance while the Lumango rise in the south. From Kasaki to Ifakara, the train travels through an inaccessible area and, according to the timetable, always in the dead of night. Seeing the beauty of this route by day is the exception. Along the foothills of the Mukumi and Utsungwa Mountain National Parks, the Tazara crosses a 200-kilometre fertile floodplain. People settled here in the 70s as well, setting up businesses and finding work with the railroad. They take care of the security of the stations and railroad lines. Even though the Tazara has been here for 40 years, the unprotected tracks still sometimes prove problematic. Especially since no one knows when the next train will arrive, accidents happen. Like here, when a rail vehicle collided with a badly parked moped. Luckily, the driver was unharmed in the collision. The train crossings are unpaved and poorly protected, making them prone to accidents. More often than not, involving a careless moped driver. The Shoma will take the wreck to the nearest railroad station, where it will be handed to the police. Everyone else is relieved to have escaped with just a scare once again. One hundred and fifty eight kilometers of difficult terrain lie between Mlimba, the Kingdom of the Elephants, and Makambako, the range of the bulls. The area proved to be the greatest challenge for the railway's architects. At the time, it was hard to get an overview, whereas nowadays the scale of the operation is unimaginable. 100,000 men fought against this dense forest. They had to haul all the equipment up the mountains and back down again on muddy paths. 330,000 tonnes of steel rails alone had to be laid. Railroad ties and bridge sections were produced alongside the route in tent camps around the clock. Forty-six bridges and 18 tunnels had to be built in this short stretch alone. The area's heavy rainfall didn't make the job any easier. Complicated drainage systems were required to prevent landslides and train derailments. Surveyors used chainsaws and machetes to clear a path through the dense forest. And in this sparsely populated area, the men were left to their own devices. The tunnels were created with the help of explosives. For the teams in charge of blasting, pressure was high. People around the world were eagerly following the construction of this unique railroad line. More than 3,000 men worked on the tunnels alone. 17 died in the process. The last section of the most dangerous stretch runs along the foothills of the Mufundi Highlands. 
The region is one of the coldest in Tanzania, with winter snowfalls. The variable climate and rainy season are leaving their marks on the bridges. Rust gnaws at the iron railings, and no one knows how the thick concrete is faring as it ages. In some of the more precarious spots, the Tazara has to slow to 20 kilometers per hour for safety. The technical details of this showcase project remain secret to this day. Too great is the fear of possible attack or sabotage. There is little budget for things like comprehensive security. railroad employees use crude methods to determine where repairs are needed. Fred Negeva places stones on the rails to see if they've sunken or risen and need to be repaired. I love my work. It allows me to send my children to school and pay their tuition. I can also meet my family's needs and buy clothes. My work allows me to afford all of that. I put stones on the rail because I want to see where it is sunken. This one is too deep. It has to be raised. A wheel could slip off the track at a weaker spot and derail a train. Maintaining the tracks is not easy for Tazara employees. The Chinese engines and wagons have also seen better days. They often break down, sometimes beyond repair. On the steeper hills, the old locomotives seem like they just might run out of steam before reaching the top, with their lengthy trains behind them. Safety on board, however, has improved greatly, and today no one needs to be afraid while travelling on the Tazara. Sabotage, theft and accidents were more common in the past, but every train now has a mobile police station to prevent and fight crime. A big part of the Tazara's journey happens after dark. So, for those who can afford it, a night on the train is best spent in the more luxurious compartments. Six sleeper cars on the first and second class are standard equipment on the Tazara. Tourists in particular enjoy the luxury of the four-bed cabins and being lured to sleep by the steady rattling of the rails. Some 850 kilometers, the train reaches Mbeya in the southern highlands of Tanzania and crosses the Great African Rift Valley, a fissure in the earth that stretches 6,000 kilometers from Syria to Mozambique. Mm -hmm. 
Lake Nyasa in Tanzania is one of the great lakes in the East African Rift Valley and Africa's third largest. It also borders Malawi and Mozambique. The lake is home to over a thousand different fish species, more than all the species in North America and Europe combined. With a length of 560 kilometers, a width of up to 80 kilometers, and a maximum depth of 704 meters, it's a giant inland lake. Lake Nyasa was formed several million years ago, making it one of the oldest in the world. Farmers used the fertile mountains along the East African Rift Valley for commercial tea and rice plantations. valleys, small farmers have been planting bananas and cocoa, among other crops, for over a hundred years. Since artificial agriculture inputs are not available, they've been producing genuine organic cacao since time immemorial, completely without fertilizers or any other chemicals. They earn little, just enough to cover the bare necessities. And family planning is in the hands of the women, as is the care and upbringing of the children. The patriarchal society frowns on contraception and big families are seen as a sign of wealth and security for old age. Families with five or six children are quite common. From the sleepy region by Lake Nyasa, the railroad line is easily accessed by an expressway a valuable connection for many of the small farmers to get their produce to market. From Beya, the Tazara crosses into Zambia. 1,068 kilometers into the train's journey, it arrives in the small market town of Chorzi, only about 200 kilometers from the provincial capital of Kazama. The train is eagerly anticipated in Chorzi, where many small farmers want to get their latest harvest on board. Many carry smaller 20 kilo bags, but some are as heavy as 50 kilos or more. But the most important part is to get on the train with your luggage. No one knows when the next one will arrive. The trains are not for the timid. Jostling is part of any ride and anyone afraid of personal contact is better off elsewhere. Most women are travelling on business and know how to assert themselves. But travelling in pairs is always the safest option. Trader Felice Chongo is going to Tunduma today with friends. There used to be a lot of thieves on the train. They didn't just steal from us women, they also insulted us. It was really dangerous. We didn't like riding the Tazara and looked for other ways to get out of here. But now it's fine, because the police are now also on board. Lately we've had our peace. <laughs> For me and my baby, it's okay to travel by train. It's safer than by car, especially at night. Rosemary Combo has no problems bringing her infant along for the ride. 
The construction of the railroad line has completely changed this region. Especially in the hard to reach areas, people are completely dependent on the Tazara. 54% of the population lives from agriculture. To transport larger quantities of harvests, the farmers need the railroad. If the railroad disappeared, their best opportunity to earn money would disappear along with it. In some parts, time seems to stand still, and people continue to live almost as they did a hundred years ago. Reforms are urgently needed. The next major stop is Serenji. The small town near the Muchinga Mountains is like the eye of a needle between the developed south and the underdeveloped north. The town is the starting point for tourists heading into various Zambian national parks. One of Zambia's official natural monuments is nearby. In the middle of the wilderness on the edge of the Muchinga escarpment, the Kundalila Waterfall, a place sacred to the locals. The name Kundalila means weeping dove in the local Bemba language. The Kaomba River plunges dramatically 80 metres down the cliffs. At the base of the waterfall is a natural deep pool surrounded by wildflowers. Visitors are allowed to swim here and are even encouraged by park authorities to camp and picnic on the grounds. The top of the falls offers a stunning view over the Luanga Valley. The landscape bears the mark of the incredible forces rising up from the Earth's crust millions of years ago. A hundred kilometers south of Serenji, the train reaches Mukushi, the penultimate stop on the nearly 1900 kilometer route. The town is on the Tanzam Highway, the Tanzania Zambia Expressway built by the US in the 1970s. Relics from another time. Aging freight cars at Makushi Station. Not much remains of the once lofty dreams of affluence. An economic boom has yet to materialize. Trucks that happen to pass by are often more reliable than the railroad. Many hitchhikers set off in search of a job while others have lost confidence in the Tazara. The railway has ultimately failed to keep its promises. The state-owned train company is losing out to the free enterprise of the roads. The Tazara doesn't even bring in enough money to allow the state to update the tracks to much-needed modern standards. But for railroad workers, every train clattering along the tracks, whether freight or passenger, is a boost to morale. They're not about to give up on the Uhuru train. Not yet, anyway. Getting a job with the railroad is like winning the lottery for many, even if employees have to wait months for their paychecks, as they did last summer. Initially, nearly 50 years ago, the Tanzania-Zambia Railway was presented as Africa's largest infrastructure project. But above all, it was intended to help the poor in the outback. The Tazara was a symbolic expression of state power intended to realise the post-colonial dream of prosperity for all. Oh. 
Today, the railroad is more of an example of a broken economic system. No one really takes train travel seriously anymore. The tracks have become a stomping ground for everyone, including the livestock. The district of Mukushi is rich in minerals and precious stones, but the train station shows no sign of those riches. Nevertheless, the young generation is hoping for a better future with the Tazara. Rail worker Chanda Boilia and his girlfriend Cecilia Mwapa see their future on the rails. Okay, my personal dream about Tazar is um, I want to see a change within the company. And even up to now, it's like facing the same problems, you know, especially like financials. So, so my greatest dream about it is to see it change because I really love this company. I want it to be operating like just these other real companies it's like in Germany, you know, China and other um, like South Africa is also doing great in this type of transport. So my greatest dream about Desert is to see it change and uh, operate normally like the way it used to happen in the time uh, that when it was opened. <laughs> that personal relationship between me and the train, yeah. And it has always been my dream since childhood. When I see the trains moving, I'll be like, I also want to be one of those guys who drives those, one of those guys who repair rails. So, so it's like a dream come true to me because it's something that I was uh, wishing for and it came to a reality. Now that I mean, I want to like do the things that I was wishing that time. I want to do them now. Yeah. The vision of mobility for all is still alive. Engineer Samuel Mukwa is among those who have not lost faith in the Tazara. Personally, uh, from the way I look at it, I how will it to an elephant? Looking at the elephant, by nature of it, it is huge, just like the train itself. Then it has power. It, is, it has power to lift the locomotive. And uh, looking at the pace at which the train moves, it is compared to, it is very different from other automobiles. The, usually here in Africa, the trains are considered to be a bit slow, just like an elephant itself. So that's the reason why I would relate it to an elephant. A strong elephant that also knows how to find its way out of the crisis. Zambia still has large deposits of copper, cobalt and precious stones. At one time, the country was the fourth largest copper producer in the world. But falling prices and mismanagement have nearly ruined the industry. Thanks to recent investments and an increased demand for raw materials from China, Zambia is once again on the right track. There's little hope that the Tazara's freight traffic will be picking up any time soon. Competition on the rails has become fierce. Since the opening of borders following the demise of the racist apartheid regimes, East and South Africa's rail companies have had to fight each other for every load. After 
52 hours of travel, 105 stations and 1,860 kilometres, the Tazara arrives at the final station in Kapiri Mposhi in Zambia's Copper Belt. With two departures a week, the Tazara transports about half a million people a year. Despite the dangerous route, the railroad is considered a safe option for travellers. There were no real setbacks this time either. What the future holds for the Tazara might be unclear, but one thing is certain. This rail service remains a love affair for many. And even if the locals would prefer to get to their destination faster, those who have travelled from further away might not mind the pace. After all, slow tourism is a growing trend. Slow and intense. The Tazara guarantees little else. And not knowing your exact departure and arrival times adds a bit of adventure. Free of charge.